Everybody's Tyler here at Vex Rules, checking in 2029C. An incredible team inception coming in from Plano here. Triple Crown at Texas States and looking really good so far. We're going to be really focusing on three key things with this robot here. First off, their hot swap, uh, what they're doing in regards to uh, this puncher mechanism and uh, how they run it either for or not for a match as well too. And then we're going to be talking about uh, their hanging mechanism, how that's been coming into play with that H tier hang. This is one of the teams that when the uncap came off, definitely was one of the pioneers in doing that type of hang. So a lot of great things to talk about for that. And they're going to be running a little bit more through the code, how they're implementing as well and deploying it. So let's learn more about them coming up here on Pits and Parts. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Grow Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Jason, let's focus on a couple of key things this robot here. Talk to me about uh, your hot swap strategy, how you're implementing it, and then like, how do you choose like which route you want to go for a match? So in a match, usually when people do, it's when they bowl tri balls into their intake. And then, so they don't really use a slapper. And what we came up with is this hot swappable slapper. With, if you take out these two screws and these two screws in the back, the slapper can come off entirely. And we can put the two motors on the slapper onto the intake. This gives us a 22 watt intake and it's very fast and strong. How quickly are you able to actually do that hot swap? Like if, you, if you're in playoffs, is this something you're gonna be able to do for your next match? Um, I'd say around like a minute or two, we can get it uh, done. Depends on if there's actual other problems with the robot. And then looking at, uh, you know, coming in the VEX rules as well too, is this something that was an option on your robot prior to VEX rules or did you just implement this? We actually had this hot swap design at States. So at States, we, we just switched between skills and tournament. And so we just have, we have basically the same design with the triangle bracing in the front. But in the back and then have, but instead we have two standoffs connecting in the back instead of coming to the front. So we had that thing in the in States before the national. So did you find yourself at States? Were you actually some matches still using your slapper in there as well too? Because I think the way this game is doing involved, we might actually see again that some teams might put it back on during playoffs, which I think is kind of interesting. Um, for our like strategies, we mo most focused on trying to keep the tri balls that we introduced to the field in our own goal. So we really just don't really use a slapper at all. So we haven't, after implementing the detachable slapper, we haven't really used a slapper in a match. Okay, makes enough sense on there. So let's uh, pass it on over to Kevin, talk more about this uh, hang mechanism you have. So I'd like to ask you a couple things in regards to hang. Of course, we'd love to have you go through it as well too, but when the uncap rule change came out of the place, you guys were like the first ones pretty much to have these out. So just talk to me more about like, how did you even come up with doing that in the first place? Like when you heard about that rule change, what popped in your head that made you want to go that route? And let's break it down a little bit more. Right. So actually, what something that not a lot of people know is that we actually had a winch hang on our very first robot, right? Um, it was pretty, it was kind of a similar placement to this winch right here. It'd be at the back, we'd have a power takeoff mechanism, and he connected to some kind of lift. The only difference would be from the clamp, right? And that was the biggest challenge that we couldn't overcome at the beginning of the season. So we did that. But when that um, manual update came out, right, we, we our minds kind of started spinning, right? So uh, we figured that as long as you could get some kind of hook, like it could literally, it's like on here, it's just a standoff, right? As long as you could get it into that hole um, at the top of the elevation bar, like how some teams did it in Star Trek, right? Then you could just hang like with the winch, right? And then I think what, one team that's helped us a lot with our, actually our design is, is 2654P, pronounce this. Um, they started developing theirs initially, and then like we, we well we both started developing around the same time, but uh, we were able to take some things that they were doing, and we were able to improve it. Yeah, we got the interview. Uh, Pronounced this at an early stage event as well too, and obviously they had a ton of success with yeah. what there was, what theirs was as well. Coming into like Vex rules or even states as well too, you know we're starting to see from the meta evolution more teams going with a low bot and still potentially having like a higher tier hang. Uh, when you guys were looking at coming in the world here, were there any considerations to maybe chopping off part of your bot or anything like that? Um, we definitely considered it, right? Because having that D score potential is really crucial for match play. But in the end, for, for our team, we didn't really consider it, mainly because um, we our main goal at Worlds actually is to win skills. And on also designing such a robot in like such a compact space is a lot more challenging to pull off 
than to have this full like 12 by 18 by 18 size restriction, right? That, that's kind of interesting. Talk to me more about that in regards to, you said coming to Worlds, your goal is to win skills. So talk to me about why it's so important to you. Yeah, so, so some a fun fact I want to say is that we actually have never lost skills at any competition ever. So wow. every single competition, we've won skills champion. So we hope we can end, end this year off with a bang, uh, win a red for our team, you know? Um, but yeah, that's kind of our main motivation for winning skills. Okay. Right? Have you done any skills matches as yet? As, as of uh, this Yes, filming? we are currently first place of, I believe, 450, 452. Nice. So and any more to go yet? Yes, we have one more run of each. So hopefully we can, hopefully we can increase that score a little bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing that as well too, and good luck, of course, uh, in that aspect as well too. Danny, let's talk more about the code on your robot here. I know we got some stuff on screen uh, that we'll be showing off. So walk me through uh, some of the implementations you've been doing. So when we were thinking about match play this season and also about skills this season, we realized that a lot of the trajectories that we needed to take were more precise. So we didn't think that straight turn and uh, just turning and moving straight would be very efficient this season. So we implemented odometry onto the bottom of the bot, which on with an inertial sensor and two tracking wheels. And this allowed us to actually correct for disturbances whenever we get hit on the field during match play or during skills if a tri ball gets stuck somewhere on the robot. And the benefit of this for, especially for match play, is that a lot of teams nowadays rush the middle tri balls, but they get this, their far side autons, which score a lot of tri balls get disrupted due to the opponent near side. So with the, the odometry, we can actually just recorrect onto our original trajectory while also retaining the tri ball that we initially picked up. And the main algorithm that I use alongside odometry, which keeps track of the robot location, is the boomerang controller and this allows us to accurately follow trajectories using a little bit of trigonometry it essentially given a point that you want to move to you can tune certain parameters so that you approach the point from a given angle so this allows us to be extremely precise with how we go about the field and also allows us to be much faster than other teams in spite of our slow drive speed and we actually do a lot of other things to optimize all of our skills runs and all of our match runs and I have a ton of, one of the most important parts of motion algorithms are its exit conditions. And I use a variety of them rather than just being within a certain positional error or being within a certain velocity. For example, uh, we actually have an exit condition that when the intake detects a tri ball or when the intake drops RPM, it assumes that a tri ball has been picked up. So this allows us to move to pick up tri balls and quickly back up during match play. So overall, fantastic performance by Inception here. Good luck, of course, here at Vex Rolls, and especially in the skills as well, too. Can't wait to see how it winds up. Rooting for you guys, uh, take number one of that. So thanks again for telling us more about Machine. A lot of great things you can learn about, and good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. This video on fun is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. The Robotics Education and Competition Foundation provides fantastic programs for students from elementary school all the way through college. These include VEX, Aerial Drone Competition, Online Challenges, JROTC, Girl Powered, Scholarships, Certifications, and so much more. To discover these exciting opportunities, visit RECF.org and get connected. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Most live shows can be found on the First Updates Now YouTube channel, live competitions at twitch.tv slash firstupdatesnow, and join our Discord at discord.gg slash firstupdatesnow. Check our other social offerings on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter.